another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 38, which is called the Terrific Triple Towers, um, and it enables you to create a lighthouse, a windmill, and a helter skelter. And if those of you who watch a lot of my videos, if you remember that I turned the beehive into a windmill, you could technically use the sails from the windmill from this set to you know, create your sails for your beehive or turn any of your other tonic die sets into uh, like comical windmills, you know, that are a funny shape. Because um, I'm sure there are plenty of different ones that you could do that to. Um, so yeah, there's some really useful dies in here that you can definitely mix and match with other tonic die sets and be really creative with how you use them. Um, and I really love all of the different elements that we're getting in them. All three different towers that you can create have different tops to them. The Helter Skelter obviously has the slide portion that goes around it. You've got different patterns to use on them as well. Different windows, different doors, all sorts of different things that can really help you kind of... Um, make it a really unique kind of building or you can definitely turn them into other buildings as well when I was putting my Helter Skelter together I was thinking oh this could be um, Rapunzel's tower as well you could even make it into um, you know in Harry Potter the Quidditch um, stands that they all sit in when they're watching the game you could make it to be one of those it kind of looks like one of them um, you could turn it into a rocket you can add like extra die cuts onto it it could be the trunk of a palm tree and you could add like gorgeous large um, maybe just hand cut like palm leaves coming off the top of it it could be so many different things so I'll quickly show you the three that it creates and I will show them in more detail later and there will also be a construction video this month which is showing you how um, I put the lighthouse together and how I decided to do the stripes on my lighthouse as well with a few other ideas of how you might want to try doing stripes too um, so that you can create the lighthouse you can create the windmill with the sails that turn. You've got the whole mechanism which you can easily transfer to another object um, and turn it into a windmill. And then you also have um, a helter skelter as well. The slide doesn't go all the way around the helter skelter but if you stand it this direction it looks like it's kind of continuous going around it so it works really nicely and you know the chances of somebody actually seeing all the way around it when it's displayed on a shelf is kind of a little bit slim so you know it doesn't matter that the slide doesn't go all the way around it. Um, but there's so many different angles involved in all of these. I mean, you could you could maybe mess around with it, and try and get some of these pieces to fit in other areas, uh, but I just felt like I didn't mind the look of it um, not having a complete slide on it. I think it looks fine as it is. And this one I decided to stick together in the middle so that just the top comes off as the lid, but you can make them break in the middle as well. But for this one, I um, wanted to tie in the lighter colour that I'd used on the top of this one, so I put a ribbon around the centre of it and made it more of a feature on it as well so you can kind of do whatever you like really um, and there's some obviously so many different colour variations that you can do with these as well so it's a really good set for just making your imagination run wild so those are all of the three that you can create and I'll show you those in more detail later and also actually the windmill I've done a uh, photographic step by step for Tonic's blog so if you go to Tonic's blog when um, this die set comes out you should be able to find the blog post um, of picture step by steps of exactly how I created my windmill um, and how I put vellum in the sails as well so it's actually got the shimmery gold vellum in the sails too so um yeah if you want to see photographically how to put one together you've got that if you want to see pictorially how to put it together you've got the instructions in the packaging and if you want to see in a video form how to put one together um you've got my construction video tomorrow so they are pretty simple to put together i just thought this month because you can make three different towers and i wanted to make one of each of them i might as well um you know utilize the time of putting them together and i might as well film a construction rather than a tutorial of how to make a card with these although i do have an idea for a card that i'll show you later on as well so first of all with all of these dies you have got everything you need to create the base which is the same for all of them apart from the helter skelter the helter skelter has one extra piece on the base because it can't recess into the base due to the slide um, so for the base pieces 
of any of your towers, you need two of these, which my card actually involves using these because I think when you cut this out, it looks like a canvas. Um, and because these fold round, it kind of gives like a little lip like the back of a canvas. So for my card, it's still drying at the moment. It probably won't be dry by the time I show it to you, but um, it's like a I've turned it into like a little abstract canvas. Um, and so you put two of these together, you have all of the pieces coming around the edges, you fold them all under, and for the lighthouse and the windmill, you turn it up this way and you recess the tower into the gap that it leaves. So you have the little raised bit around the edge and then you recess the tower into the centre. But for the Helter Skelter, you need the platform to be flat. You can't recess the Helter Skelter down because of how its slide comes down at the bottom. Um, its slide needs that length to come down here so you have to put an extra piece on the base of this one and you don't recess it into it so for the um like for doing that you can cut it in the same color you can cut it in a different color but you need the larger hexagon die which comes around this piece here um so that's what you need to create your bases for any of your towers then uh, for the main tower portion you need these two dies here. So this is the bottom portion because it's larger and this is the top portion because it's slightly smaller. The bottom portion has a glue tab on it which attaches to the base and then the rest of these, they're not actually um, indications of where to fold, they're more indications of that's how it's going to overlap. This bottom line will overlap up to there. So if you're gluing it together, you'll glue it and line them up to there. Or if you're just putting it as um, you know a top piece that comes on and off and the towel breaks in the middle that's where the opening will be and it kind of shows you how the lip goes over the top of the other one and then this top piece is the same for the top of the tower so all three towers have a different top piece to them um, and this is kind of where that overlaps as well um, so that is the kind of like main tower portion and then the base is this smaller hexagon that's here that comes inside that larger piece with the foldy round bits. This is the base of your hex, the base of your tower, um, and you need two of these to create your uh, base piece because we're going to do the method where you uh, put the tab like squished between them, and the instructions show you how to assemble the tower by putting each panel on each of the sides first and bringing them up together and that's how I've shown it in the photographic step by step on Tonic's blog but in my construction video because I wanted the stripes on my lighthouse to be continuous around it I actually stuck all of the panels together like this first and then show you how to put the hexagonal base in so either way you prefer to assemble you can put the base in um, because the tower tapers I wasn't sure if you could put the base in that way but you can do it that way as well so um, there's two versions of how to put it together so that is like the main tower portion then you have the three different top portions the easiest top is the lighthouse which is literally just cut three of these put them all together the roof tapers into a lovely point um, and that is the main top piece of the lighthouse but I'll come back to the um, sort of like observation deck for the lighthouse as well but that's the main top piece for the lighthouse which on the smaller portion of the side this would overlap here and that's how the lid would sit on the top of the box but for the other two versions you will need this piece here both of them require this piece so if you're creating the helter skelter or the windmill you will need three of these pieces to create the bottom portion of the top and then you either go for this one which is designed to make the windmill and it gives you the flat hexagonal top with the flat pieces coming down the side and this ends up being your glue tab that allows you to attach that onto there but if you want to create the helter skelter they've given you um, more of a fancy sort of top piece you definitely could use the same one as the windmill but they've given you a fancier top piece that actually has a slit in it which enables you to put the little flag coming out of the top of the helter skelter as well and the way this works is again these are glue tabs but this kind of overlaps a bit more um, to give that curved portion sort of hanging over the edge of the little window and um, in either case you can cut these windows out I did only cut them out for the helter skelter um, but you can cut them out for the windmill if you want to as well and I actually use both windows I just cut them like that and then did three panels like that but you can choose the same window in all of them or you can mix and match the windows as well depending on what you would prefer so that is the top portion for um, the Helter Skelter and the windmill. And then 
To go on the top of the Helter Skelter, you can also put the flag, so you get both handedness of them, which is fantastic. So you can stick them back to back, um, and then you just bend these bottom pieces, so you'll end up with a circle as the bottom piece, but you slide those through the slit in the top of the Helter Skelter, and then splay them out underneath as well. So going back to the top of the um, lighthouse, that's the main top piece, but you also need one of these and three of this piece which create your observation deck for that lighthouse and the way this works is these don't actually have score lines here but these are glue tabs and you literally just fold them down i show you in the construction video how simple that is they literally just want to fold um, along that line anyway and those end up being the glue tabs then this sort of railing piece sticks to the outside of this and then this main portion fits inside and you use um, the marker line here to line up to the edge of this piece and then you just uh, push the glue tabs downwards and they will sort of stick out down here on the top portion of your lid for your lighthouse. So that's the rest of the lighthouse portions. Then the rest of the windmill portions, you have this funny looking piece here, which you cut two of and it creates that protruding little hexagon that allows you to place the um, sails of the windmill onto there with a brad. And because this is raised up, it allows the um, tails of the brad or the legs of the brad to still spin. Um, so your sails of your windmill will move freely. Um, with this kind of a mechanism so you definitely could utilize this for other things as well maybe you're making your own board game and you want like one of those little arrow spinners that you flick you know you could use this to create some kind of mechanism like that as well there's so many different ways of using all these different pieces um, but that is what this is for and then you have the sail piece as well so you've got the gorgeous sail which you need four of these however for mine I cut four of them stuck them onto vellum cut around them and then used another four of them just sticking them the same way round back to back um, to sandwich that vellum in between and make them really nice and sturdy so when I stacked them all together I ended up with eight thicknesses of card here but the brad still goes through eight thicknesses of card and into this and turns perfectly so it doesn't really matter how um, robust you kind of make the sails of your windmill it still works and turns really nicely so those are the extra pieces to create your windmill. Then you have quite a few extra pieces here for the Helter Skelter. So you have um, these two really cleverly designed pieces. I'm presuming Toby designed this set because it's got a lot of like engineering in it. Um, but you have these two pieces. One is for the top uh, portion of the Helter Skelter and one is for the bottom portion um, so the box can still uh, break in half at the middle if you're using the Helter Skelter although you can stick it together and hide the join or just leave the join as it is if you want to as well either way works but this is the piece that goes around the well it's supposed to go around the Helter Skelter first to sort of show you where the slide is going to be however I think I would maybe recommend um, sticking the side banisters to this first because what I did in the end is I stuck these around the helter skelter stuck all of the little banister pieces on and then you had the little glue tab showing of the banisters so I took another one of each of these and stuck them back around the tower as well but because that was then an extra thickness of cardstock they didn't perfectly line up with each other so I might recommend um giving it a try seeing if you can get on with it trying to build um the bits of the slide onto the portions of these before you stick them on just so that it makes it a little bit neater so you can see here you can't see the glue tab that sticks this sort of slide portion to that bit because I've put another one over the top um, so it's kind of up to you really the instructions say put these bits on first and then put these bits on but I didn't quite like that ugly sort of look that was on there so I did stick another one all the way around but you can kind of do it whichever way you want you could actually cut these from like printer paper first stick them on to give you your guide and then cut them from the proper colour of cardstock that you want and stick them back over the top and then you wouldn't have too much thickness in there that could be a good way of doing it but anyway those are the guides for the Helter Skelter slide and then there are six pieces to create the um, you know sort of two front sections of slide that you can see on your finished project and they are all lettered as well so you know exactly which one is where um, I constructed mine by following the instructions so they are easy to follow um, but they've all got a letter on them you can see this one has an A on that little glue tab there um, and then you have B, C, D, E, 
E and F um, with all of the, you know, letters, all of the different proper angles worked out. A has the little bit at the bottom, which is sort of like the base of the slide, um, and F, I think, is the top of the slide. So you've got everything you need to create the perfect angles going around the slide, and they coordinate with the specific places on here, which is depicted in the instructions that should come inside the packaging. So those are all of the Helter Skelter pieces. Then we've mostly just left with the decorations now. So for the top of the Helter Skelter or this roof piece, whichever, you know, whatever you decide to use it for, you have a couple of different options for decoration. You've got this beautiful swirly one that's already got its outside cutting edge. So you literally just cut that, stick it on and you're done um, with the pattern. Or if you want to put a solid backing behind it, you've actually got the solid piece as well. Or you can use this solid piece and the little solid piece and layer them up together. On the packaging, um, I presume it's uh, Leo, Karen or Alison who's made it, they've lined the uh, panels up like this, but on my one I decided to push them all towards the top, so it kind of gives a slightly different effect as well, could be like a, a flower going over the top, um, so you know, a different sort of effect. So those are the two decorations for the top of that. I don't want to lose all of these dies, I'm going to have to carefully place them down. Then, the top of the um, windmill, uh, you have this piece here, you have two different options for little panels. So you've got this tiny little window one, and then this one, it's got part of a pattern on it, it's kind of like little half circles. It's an interesting little pattern design. I don't know whether it's maybe supposed to be like um, roof tiles, maybe it's um, imitating little roof tiles, um, but they both have their cutting edges on which is fantastic. But if you did want to back them with a solid colour, you do also have the solid die as well, so you can do that too. So those are those little panels for the top of the windmill. Then you also have um, little windows and doors, so you've got two different doors that you can use. Again, they're, they're separate outside and inside, so you've got the solid one to be able to cut a backing piece to go behind it. But you've got like a traditional front door kind of a door, and then you've got more of like um, a wooden arched sort of like castle door or something. Um, I did that one on the lighthouse works really nicely on the lighthouse but you've got both those different doors um, and this one has that beautiful debossing detail in there um, and if you have any of the other sets um, I'm sure I've said this quite a few times any of the other sets that have little elements for houses and things um, little windows little doors uh, vines plant pots all that kind of thing you can mix and match them in to decorate them even further um, then you also have different windows so there's quite a variety of windows actually you've got this one that is like a rectangle one with the six panes cut into it so you can do that sort of a little window you can do a kind of like a bigger version of that um, and create these kind of little windows or like larger uh, long like floor to ceiling kind of windows you can also do um, in the pieces that you can use to create the windows in the top of the um, helter skelter or the windmill uh, let me pick them up these two pieces here that you put inside that roof portion you can actually use those interior fall away pieces as windows or you have the smaller versions of them as well so you can actually uh, use larger or smaller windows you could layer them up if you want to as well um, and actually I think this one looks a little bit like a tiny little gift tag too so you could use it for that kind of thing as well but you've got those little ones then um, you also have this piece which is for the top of the lighthouse primarily I think but you could use it elsewhere too to create the kind of um, lattice sort of windows that uh, the, is in front of the light at the top of the lighthouse so you've got that kind of a lantern-y sort of looking window pane that you can use there or anywhere else that you want to and again you have the outside one separate and the two different outsides for those two different windows are different sizes so the metal looks the same size, but this one, the cutting edge, is right on the outside, and this one, the cutting edge, is right on the inside, so you could definitely layer them up as well if you want to. Or you can use the smaller one to cut the piece to go behind, and then there'll be no worries of it um, poking out around the edges or anything. So you've got those. 
Then for the main side panels of any of the designs that you want to use, um, you've got two brick panels. So these have their outside cutting edge on them as well, so it makes it super duper easy for cutting lots of them. Um, and you've got the larger one for the bottom and the smaller one for the top. So you've got beautiful brickwork patterns. And you don't have to use the brickwork like this. You could save the bricks and stick them on individually just to give like a suggestion of bricks as well. I really do think a Rapunzel towel would look fantastic. And you could do it in light grey with like um, little suggestions of bricks and have like ivy and stuff you've got that large ivy set from tonic and um, that they came out with a little while back um, draping that around the tower would look fantastic and you could have like a plait of hair coming out of the window um, yeah you can use them as they are or the fall away pieces then you also have the solid panels so you can back those bricks with solid panels or you can just use the solid panels um, on the Helter Skelter I just used the solid panels but switched the colours of the panel pieces so they looked a little bit different and then you do also get these pieces here which I say in the um, construction video I think these are designed to give the kind of look of the um, lighthouse they kind of give like a stripey sort of effect to the lighthouse however I wanted that continuous stripe which is why I decided to do the construction video and show you different ways of um, creating those stripes um, but you've got that option as well or they could just be windows in there too they could kind of be anything you want them to be really but you've got that option for panels as well and then finally we'd have those last little finishing touch kind of embellishments so we've got a little anchor and a ship's wheel to go with the nautical theme so gorgeous tiny little dies. We also have for the nautical theme um, a little compass. So you could put the compass on the top of the lighthouse and you have the bubble to go with that as well. Um, or you could create this as a little dangling element to hang off of the lighthouse. Um, any sort of different you know, style of something that you want to do. You've got the gorgeous little compass. And I'm sure there's other... Like you could do like a watchtower or something and have a compass on it. Or you could you could make um like castle turrets for the top of it and then put walls between them and have them as like the corners of a big castle or something. That would look really cool as well. So you've got the little compass. And then to go with that kind of like um, Rapunzel sort of idea or just bringing in some foliage that's grown around it, you have got... Um, three different sort of uh, foliage flower kind of pieces so you've got one sprig of foliage three little flowers a double leaf and a single leaf that you can use to create whatever kind of arrangement that you want to so you can really go to town with all of the different decorations and they've given you tiny little flowers so it's kind of more in proportion with the size of the tower you know you can sort of tell that it's a large tower with tiny little flowers on it but if you had larger flowers as well you could make them size proportional so it's like smaller tower smaller flowers at the top of the tower and bigger flowers at the bottom or something uh, but yeah those are all of the dies that are in this month's showcase so I will go and put all of these away before I lose them and I'll come back and show you the towers in more detail as well I highly recommend taking a photo of all of the dies on the packaging like this before you start working with them because that was so much easier to put them back on there following a photograph of them all placed on there because there are so many in this set it's really difficult to fit them back in um, if you're not 100% sure where they came from because they've literally like crammed it full. It, I think it would be almost impossible to put them back in the right places or get them all to fit in a different configuration. Um, so definitely take a photograph of your die set before you start cutting it. It's also quite nice to have photographs of your sets on your phone, like if you can keep a, um, an album of them because um, you can then like refer back to them and say like I think I need a, a weird peculiar shape like this and you can like flick through your die sets. I do mean to do that but um, I still haven't gotten around to doing it yet but it would be a very good way of keeping track of your dies. Anyway, uh, I firstly wanted to show you before I end up sticking my fingers in the wet paint, this is the little abstract canvas that I really wanted to try and I think it's a nice size for um, a normal small card that I like to make. You could put it on a landscape card perhaps. Sorry, that's kind of like blowing out the colours. I think it's because they're neon paints that I was using. I don't think my camera really likes the neon paints that much. Um, but I felt like um, that was just like the perfect little canvas looking piece. So I just wanted to do some kind of little abstract piece of art to go on a card. Um, and I think that would look really lovely. Just like a bold uh, scripty sentiment or something. Um, maybe some like white on white sort of detail in the background as well or using some textured cardstock in the background perhaps but anyway 
as just another idea of how you might want to use that base piece and I thought just doing a wacky abstract piece of art but think of this, this could be a photograph you could die cut a photograph and turn it into a three dimensional canvas where the picture wraps around the edges it could be a jelly printed background that you've already done you can die cut it and you could turn it into an abstract painting to go on the front of a card or um, it could be something that your child or grandchild or godchild has drawn um, and maybe you want to use it as a Christmas card you could scan it in, reproduce it and like turn it into a little three dimensional canvas or something so there's loads of different ways of like using a canvas you don't have to make it into a canvas and then do a painting on it but um, I just thought that was a, a cool way of kind of showing you how you might want to um, use this kind of thing so it's just the little base die that you use for all three of the different towers but you can actually use it as like a small little mini canvas for a card as well so I thought I'd show you that and then I'll come back and show you all of the towers so this is the lighthouse which will be in my construction video tomorrow and I wanted to show you with this, I'll just run through it really quickly, I'll literally just show you this. In tomorrow's video, I go through different ways of how you could create a striped effect on your lighthouse. If you don't want to use the die that's in the die set, um, that kind of gives the illusion of, of striped kind of uh, panels on your lighthouse, um, you can use any of your Nouveau products, alcohol pens, um, you could just use cardstock or ribbon I mentioned in the video, um, your Nouveau shimmer powders, your aquaflows if you still have some, any of your distress inks and the dye tape from Tonic. I don't find it that great for my die cutting because of the way that I tend to die cut. I want it to be a stickier tape but it's really non-sticky. You know how like every single tape you end up using for die cutting does rip your card eventually. This really does not rip your card um, and I th think I'm going to use this mostly for when you want to mask off stripes and stuff for a background and then ink blend over it because I pressed on that tape really hard like burnishing it just to you know really try it out. Did not pull the card up at all so even though this is marketed as a die tape I think personally I'm going to use it more for um, creating my own like plaid or stripe designs and ink blending over the top of them so I think this tape is brilliant for that kind of thing and that's what I used um, on this section here to mask off and do some ink blending across there you can also use your Nouveau glitter markers or your Nouveau embossing powders as well and I'm sure you could use all sorts of other things too these were just some of the ones that I decided to try for stripey effects um, and doing this I was intending to inspire you to you know use something different or create a different kind of effect on your tower but then I was like actually I don't want to just use the Nouveau pens um, the alcohol pens to create my stripes I want to use a mixture of cool different things so I used the alcohol pens with some of the embossing powder and I also put some um, Nouveau shimmer powders on there as well so um, I go through that in full detail in tomorrow's video but I just wanted to show you it here as well but this is my lighthouse so um it's kind of a bit long for the video um you know like height wise I could zoom out a little bit more probably um but yeah really decent sized sort of box and I reckon you could put um a miniature bottle of alcohol in here uh what could I show you as a comparison if any of you have the Nouveau light mist spray bottle that's kind of a comparison for size if you want to see that or I can measure it for you as well from, sorry my squeaky chest, uh, from the tip of the point of the lighthouse to the base it is about eight and three quarter inches or about 22 centimetres um, so really decent sized tall box and there is space inside the lid so the lid is hollow as well. So I've done mine in just in two halves, but that lid is hollow too, so it goes all the way to that point. Um, but I thought um, it's a really cool box that you can stick it in the middle or you can stick it at the top so it either opens from the centre to allow you to put maybe something with a wider base and a narrower neck on it um, and then put the lid back on. Or you can just have it opening at the top and stick the middle together and fill it full of sweets or something as well. So it's a, a nice versatile um, little box. Let me find which way round I designed it to be the front. Um, and then you literally just put that back on top 
all of the stripes line up from the way that I coloured it. I tried to make them all match nicely um, and so that the red would be on the bottom of the top of the box and the top of the bottom of the box so the stripe would uh, be continuous all the way around as well. And for the rest of this one I just kept it really simple with the decoration um, and I pulled in the same grey colour that I used for the top of it to add the door, the windows and some little die cut accents. I've used the black for the little observation deck and the window frames at the top and then I've used the black at the bottom for the base as well to mirror them and behind the windows I say this in tomorrow's video as well I just used a yellow alcohol pen to colour in a piece of cardstock and then I used some of the golden sparkler um, nouveau shimmer powder to add some pattern to that because that one has tiny flecks of red and dark colours in there and I thought it would help tie all of the rest of the colours together so Although you can go for really pristine stripes using that dye tape to mask them off, um, it's also quite nice to do a little bit haphazard kind of stripes and it kind of gives it more of a seaside kind of feel. So I don't think any lighthouse that you would walk up close to would look like perfectly striped. There's probably going to be like rust strips dripping down it or, you know, peeling paint from the sunshine or something. So it gives it more of like a, a realistic, uh, rustic, distressed kind of a look if you use... Um, different kind of mediums to create your stripes on there as well. So that is the lighthouse. Then we have also got the windmill, which will be um, a step-by-step, -step, photographic step-by-step -step on Tonic's blog, um, showing you exactly how I put it all together and which, how many pieces of what you need for which sections and everything. Um, I absolutely love this. I think that mechanism is fantastic um, and that would perfectly work on the beehive if you want to turn that into a windmill and you don't want to faff around with the... Um, what did I use? Kebab skewers. Did I put some twine to tie it together, I think, as well? And then I was trying to... Oh, no, I thought afterwards that I could have used one of those little um, uh, security tag things that Tonic used to do on their packaging. Um, but this is so much easier. Um, I don't. I presume this was in the works when I turned that one into a windmill. Um, but this would have been so much easier to have had this to stick it onto there. Um, also, the top of this one is kind of making me think of a Dalek as well, actually, looking at it like that. So you could... Uh, maybe not even not put the bottom on and turn it into a Dalek like that um could it easily be that kind of thing or actually the base looks really Dalek-y as well um you could easily turn this into some monster from Doctor Who so uh that's another cool way of using it too but yeah I really really like this um versatility of this design and the windmill just looks fantastic with those sails on the top and the different domed top to it as well looks really different from the lighthouse because of the point on the lighthouse and the observation deck you can put that on this one if you want to you could have this flat top um, for the lighthouse or you can turn this into something different maybe you want to turn it into an observatory tower with a telescope coming out the top of it make it really space themed and um, use this piece as the nose cone of a rocket but not put the observation deck on and put some like fins coming out the side of it um all sorts of different things you could turn this into if you just you know use a little bit of imagination maybe google um you know long or tall buildings or you know i don't know there's so many different things that you could turn this into and i'm sure there are tons more of tonic die sets that you can definitely pinch bits and pieces from to add on to this um i mean some windmills and lighthouses perhaps have a building next to them as well so you could maybe even use one of the little house uh, die sets that Tonic have done have a little building next to it um, so many different things that you could do um, and then the final one is the Helter Skelter if you bought the Ferris wheel that came out in the March Madness um, how brilliant would a Helter Skelter look next to the Ferris wheel um, you could really go to town um, you know bringing all of your tonic die sets together to create some massive kind of scene and you could also do um maybe instead of like a traditional christmas village you could do like a christmas fun fair and have like a christmas themed helter skelter you could have the ferris wheel you could have the carousel and turn it into a merry-go-round or um have christmas characters going around the carousel you could bring in the bus and have like a christmas themed santa's grotto bus or something as well so many different ways that you can um adapt tonic dies to fit whatever need that you want them for as well but yeah there's i just looking at these is making me think of so many more possibilities of what you could do with them and the top of that really makes me think of like a flower so you could maybe even turn this into something um that's more 
like garden themed perhaps maybe some kind of water feature or um, a totem pole or you know something like that so many different things you could turn this into I'm sure you can maybe even like um, a hot drink flask I know that's a bit boring but if you know somebody who loves their coffee and is always carrying a flask around with them you could turn it into a flask and colour it the same colour that their one is and stuff all sorts of different things you could do um, but this one I stuck in the middle and did it so the lid would come off because I wanted to bring this lighter colour down that I'd used on the top of this one I used like a light yellow and I wanted to bring that down um, further down the box so I decided to use an ivory piece of um, ribbon I didn't have a light yellow but I felt like the ivory sort of brought that lighter tone down um, the rest of the box and also on this one I used the both different windows so I had those fall away pieces which I then just put as random windows um, in re like random places around the helter skelter as well so I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at tonic showcase number 38 which is called terrific triple towers but as you've just heard it's not just triple towers I'm sure there are tons of other things that you can create with these so many different possibilities and I'm sure you're going to come up with um a massive amount of different ideas I'm sure everybody watching this has probably thought of something different that I haven't mentioned so um yeah I think this is a, a really cool die set that can be used for so many different people different occasions um and all sorts i think really really lovely die set so really hope you enjoyed the video don't forget there will be a construction video tomorrow on how to put the lighthouse together if you want to watch that and there'll also be that blog post on tonic's blog of uh, photographic step by steps of how i put the windmill together as well so if you want to get hold of this die set there will be affiliate links in the description box below the video and also on my blog post too um, and i really do appreciate you taking the time to use those links it really does make a difference making those little sales as well so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again in the next video